Hey guys, just make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more cookbook related content. Thanks. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing The Korean Vegan by Joanne Lee. Joanne Lee was born in Chicago in 1979. Her parents were North Korean refugees who immigrated to America before she was born. She studied law at the University of Chicago, where she pursued a career in law afterwards. She specialized in bankruptcy law. In 2016, she started the Korean Vegan blog after starting her new vegan diet. No one was posting vegan Korean food, so she thought she could introduce this cuisine to people around the world. Today, she has over 3 million subscribers on TikTok and about 500,000 subscribers on YouTube. She's very active in posting life lessons, personal history, and food. Her TikToks and short videos are kind of like personal stories where she's cooking in the background but then describing something through the audio. This is kind of a common trend with food TikTok and YouTubers. This book is a very personal book. She goes over a lot of her family history throughout this book, their journey from North Korea to America, her adjustment to American life, with her parents learning the differences in America and how to raise their kids in a different environment. Everything in this book is vegan, which is the whole point of the book. Traditionally, Korean dishes aren't heavy on meat. They have a little bit of meat in it, maybe a broth. Meat is just kind of supposed to flavor the dish, not be the main course of the dish. I know Korean barbecue is very famous for Korean food. That didn't really come until Korea became a wealthy country where they could afford meat. Did you know that actually South Korea imports the most meat from the United States? estimated to be around $5 billion. That makes South Korea the biggest importer of U.S. beef in all of Asia. So this book kind of takes the concept of modern Korean food, traditional Korean food, and makes it vegan. So it's a very interesting read. You'd be surprised that even though Korean food doesn't have as much meat, a lot of Korean dishes aren't vegan. I mean, even kimchi, which is just a fermented vegetable, has usually some shrimp in it or it could have an oyster in it. I would imagine it's very hard for Joanne to become a vegan Korean. In the beginning of the book, it goes over Korean ingredients. There's stuff like how to pick a quality soy sauce, what flavors each ingredient brings to the dish. This is helpful because sometimes you'll need a vegan substitute for a meat portion, so this is a good way to kind of learn on what to use. Each recipe is really simple and well laid out, and there's a little excerpt at the top of the recipe which is kind of like a personal story which I really like that touch. You really get to know Joanne throughout this book. It's very creative on the Korean substitutes like there's a fishy sauce which is kind of like a boiled mushroom soup. This is probably really good to bring an umami flavor. This book is vegan but then very rooted around traditional Korean food. Like the barley tea recipe actually uses barley instead of just maybe telling you to go buy a packet of barley tea. There's a lot of different sections in this book from stews to main courses. There's sections on Korean banchan, which are sides, traditional soups, more modern Korean foods like burgers and Korean street toast. There's a bread section, which is a mix of Western and Korean breads. In this book, there's a lot of reminiscing on meat in her childhood. I think this book is a way for her to remember the great moment she had around food with her parents, and then trying to still relive this moment, but as a vegan. Some recipes seem kind of difficult, like the spicy, crunchy garlic wings, probably because it's just hard to replace wings. She kind of uses burdock root as a bone, which is a little strange to me. I wish maybe she tried cauliflower wings, something that's not trying to exactly emulate a meat dish. She does have a recipe for a spicy, crunchy garlic tofu, which makes a lot more sense to me. There's some recipes that are missing pictures, like the tofu hot pot. I think a cookbook is really good when it's very consistent on showing pictures. I think this book kind of came from a natural process in her life, where the author decided to become a vegan and had to learn how to cook vegan Korean food. As she developed these recipes, she decided to make a book for other vegans or people curious on vegan Korean food. I tried making the spicy twenjang jjigae. From trying out this recipe, I think the ingredients could have been layered a little bit better. Like with the broth, you could start by frying the onion, then the garlic, then the gochujang. She kind of does everything all at once and it would have been better just to layer it a bit. It's the same problem with the veggie stock where she should have just fried the onion first instead of frying everything all at once. I've read that boiling kombu can create bitter flavors. I think she should have just steeped it, but I honestly couldn't really tell if it was bitter or not. The veggie stock was good, but since the duenjang was so strong, it kind of hid the really good flavor. I think you could just use store-bought veggie stock for some of these recipes that the flavor is just so strong that you don't really matter on the flavor of the actual stock. And also there's just too much tofu to the stew ratio. Maybe just one more cup of broth would have been good. I also wish there was more than one kind of barbecue sauce, like a thinner one. With this barbecue sauce, I made the mushroom bulgogi, which I thought was pretty good and pretty tasty. It wasn't as filling as regular bulgogi, but of course there's no meat. I still thought it was a good alternative. In one of the interviews I was watching, she says that she became vegan because her husband decided to go vegan and she decided to be supportive of her husband. But in the book, it's a more dramatic moment where her dad is diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And after learning there was a rise with pancreatic cancer in East Asian men due to a higher quantity of red meat in their diet, she decided to go vegan. I don't know why she added that in the cookbook. I wish she was just a little more truthful instead of trying to make it really overdramatic. I'm just disappointed that I found out that the reason she became vegan was because of her husband. In the book, it's a really important moment when she realizes her dad has pancreatic cancer that she decides 
not to eat meat anymore. Maybe it was a smaller reason and not the main reason to become vegan, but it makes me think that other parts of the book could have been over dramatized. I'm not really upset about it too much, but it's just something I kind of was shocked about when I found out. Overall, I really enjoyed this book. It taught me a way on how to eat less meat throughout my weekday. I've always wanted to try incorporating less meat in my dishes, and this is a really easy and straightforward way on how to do it. I really love Korean food, so this was very approachable to me. I wouldn't say this book is perfect. You're not going to learn advanced techniques from it. I would even say it's essential if you're not vegan, but you can have a lot of fun with this book. You can learn a lot about veganism and how to eat a food that you might be familiar with, but without any meat products. You also get to learn a lot about Joanne's journey through America, her family's Koreanism, and just a lot of great things you learn through Joanne and her background. I'm giving this book a 7 out of 10.